What's going on everyone? In this video, I'm gonna go over Airbnb stock, a stock that I think by every single metric from a normal valuation standpoint is definitely completely overvalued, but I think there's some pros and cons uh, for Airbnb, so I'm gonna make a bull case for this and also a bear case scenario, and also kind of give my opinion on if you wanna make some money by selling cover calls on this or selling options on Airbnb, what are the options for that? So the first thing I wanna talk about, and I'm gonna go straight into it, is the bull case about they have a moat. And what I mean by that is Airbnb, like there can try to be competitors and there are competitors. Like there's like VRBO, but Airbnb is light years ahead and they have that brand name. Like when you think of Kleenex, you're like, oh, go get a Kleenex. Kleenex is just actually the, the brand or same with Band-Aid. Like Band-Aid is actually just the brand, but people call it a Band-Aid. With Airbnb, people are like, oh, let's go get an Airbnb. You know, yeah, you could go to Marriott.com and go to their subsection of their rentals and you could do that and that's fine. You could go find some other random vacation rental, but Airbnb has kind of coined that term a little bit um, and has that little moat there. Um, they have a lot of room to grow because there are a lot of areas that there's massive regulatory issues. Um, I've actually Airbnb a property out in Las Vegas and I had to stop because the hotel industry really, really does not want Airbnbs. So, you know, I guess the good side with that, there are a lot of areas that have regulatory issues with it. In the European Union, there's a lot of no-nos with it. Um, and there's a lot of back and forth with that because it's still such a new concept. Like there's a lot of people who just hate Airbnbs where you'll see, um, you know, owners of homes that are like, oh, I don't want to do an Airbnb because, you know, the people are going to trash, you know, the house, which, you know, um, could be true to some context, but it's actually, if you're a real estate investor and if you want to go rent your home and you want to have the least damage possible, let's say you own a more expensive home, so where there's could be more damages. Well, Airbnb gives up to a million dollars of insurance um, just by being on the platform. So if you have a tenant in a normal long-term lease that just signs a contract and they like have $500,000 of damages in the house for whatever reason, you know, you're gonna have to go sue them, you're gonna have to go all these damages and you most, they may not even have that money. But with Airbnb, you can get that million dollars insurance. So I think another massive room for growth that Airbnb has is with, you know, real estate investors, um, with people who are seeing this as a better investment opportunity and sometimes safer, especially in today's age where, you know, you have a lot more people that do things online and where people are, you know, a little more flexible and are not signing more long-term leases. Um, so there's that. What I wanna go over right now, I'm actually gonna go into my computer and show with you some of the acquisitions that Airbnb is making and also kind of go over the financials a little bit because again, from every single context, right now Airbnb is trading at over $100 billion valuation and they do less than $4 billion a year in revenue and they lose money. So from every normal standpoint, they are extremely overvalued, but at the end of the day, what the market is paying for the price of the stock is what you know it is valued. So let's kind of get into this right now. All right, so this is Airbnb. They're trading at $194 right now. Um, you know, you can actually see from 2017, they did two and a half billion. Uh, they grew in 2018 and grew in 2019 and they've had a dip. So obviously that has to do with COVID and less people traveling and they had probably several months of not making so much money. But, you know, looking at that, you know, 2018 to 2019 is definitely a growth. They're not making money, but still, um, definitely a lot of overvaluedness going on. So they have $116 billion market cap, um, you know, from simply price towards sales, they're trading at 33 X of price towards sales, which is definitely a little bit crazy. So one thing that I think Airbnb for me, um, the only way that I could see this actually working out in the long term and it making sense of being, you know, a $500 billion company, because why would you want to invest into, you know, a, not, not a startup, but like they just did an IPO recently. I think the only, like it would only make sense for someone to invest in Airbnb if they can at least get two, three, four, five X on their money in the next, you know, five, 10, 15 years. If not, I don't think it makes sense to gamble or, or take the risk on the stock because there is a lot of downside risk with this. So Airbnb, it's great that they're making some smart acquisitions of, you know, like Hotel Tonight, um, luxury retreats, I've not heard of this. Um, this is like essentially Airbnb for people that are disabled. Um, this is, I believe, this has something to do with like a background check. So they're making smart acquisitions that help their business, you know, buying up companies that are kind of competitors, uh, accommodating more different types of people, background checks. Um, they actually own some management services as well. So that's good. 
However, for me, the issue with Airbnb is they make their money really off of processing fees. So if you look at a company like Shopify, Shopify and Airbnb kind of make money in the same ways. Um, you know, they have other little sets that they can make money from and all these different random fees. Shopify, they make money off of processing fees. That's where most of their profits coming from. They have other different things. Airbnb, the same thing, because when you go pay for an Airbnb, and let's say I want to go get like a five night stay, you know, in somewhere in California, and let's say my trip is in one month from now. I pay Airbnb, I can either choose to do 50% down or the full amount paid up front right then and there. Um, the person, the host is not going to get paid for that reservation until t 24 hours after the reservation. So the opportunity that I see where, you know, Airbnb probably has thought about this and, you know, probably plans to do so is making money by kind of being a bank and, you know, we're really making money with financing. Because if you think about this, if someone's a host and they have a property that say it's worth $500,000 and they're making you know, $100,000 a year on Airbnb because sometimes you can get a higher, you know, bang for your buck on Airbnb. Well, that would make sense for them to go finance that, but there's not many banks that are gonna be willing to go, you know, refinance that are willing to go finance that for them. There are some that look at that, but it's, you know, not really seen as a credible source yet, even though like in many aspects it can be. So I could see Airbnb, you know, and this is total speculation. I don't, I don't even think they're planning to do this, but if they started making acquisitions and started working towards mergers that had to do with the financing space, like if Airbnb comes out with you know, a bank or if they go make a partnership with you know, um, some type of bank or financing company, that could be where there's some serious money because if you look at that, you know, imagine them running an ad on Airbnb like, hey host, would you like to refinance your property or like, would you like to go buy properties through us, things like that. I think like, I think honestly it would make sense for like something like Zillow or like some bank to actually buy up Airbnb and look at the fundamentals from that. But again, in any standpoint, you know, one pro that they do have is they have $5 billion of cash on hand so they can go make some pretty serious acquisitions. But from every single standpoint, that is definitely very, very rich. So now let me go over a little bit of the, the downsides and the cons of this company and kind of the bear case on what could happen. Because right now they're trading at $194, um, you know, $116 billion valuation. It's interesting. So the first thing I want to talk about is with, you know, their numbers. Like obviously I've talked about it a little bit, but like, what do I mean by that? Well, you know, if they don't grow that massively, which obviously from 2017 to 2018 to 2019, they definitely grew, then COVID hit. So we kind of have to assume, okay, this was a, rant, a weird year. However, are people going to be fine and still want to travel less? Because at the end of the day, you're still having to use somebody else's home. So maybe now with a lot of people thinking like that, they're not gonna have such a fast growth rate. So bear case scenario, in my opinion, is that Airbnb doesn't grow that much over the next five, 10 years, and maybe they're growing the revenue at 10% annually. Now they're being smart and they're coming out with like uh, online experiences and they're going a little heavier on the other experience side of it all. So I think that's where they have some things, but that's kind of all their money. They're simply, they get off the processing fees here. You know, they could definitely choose to, you know, try to mark up and make money elsewhere. Um, but let's say bear case scenario, they grow their revenue at 10% a year for the next, I don't know, let's look five years out. So right now they're at $4.8 billion company, or actually no, they're less than that. They're at 3.3, 3.3 um, times 1.1 times 1.1 times 1.1 times 1.1. I mean, I guess that would get them back to 2019. So I don't know, let's say, in five years from now, they get to be a $6 billion a year company. You're gonna to start to see people really start selling because they're like, okay, it doesn't make sense for us to be paying at a 33X uh, price towards sales at such a slow growth rate. Um, which I think investors at that point, they're gonna be like, okay, you guys are, you need to start seeing profits, which then could even slow down growth even more. Um, where I think you would, you know, if you look at something, they're gonna start comparing to something like Marriott, right? If you look at like Hilton stock or, uh, you know, Hilton stock or Marriott stock, I think what would happen is they're like, we're just gonna start valuing this as a typical travel company. We're not gonna value this as such a high growth tech company that's trading at 30X of sales valuations. So if that happens, you can look at the market cap right now of Marriott, which is $50 billion, and you know, they have a lot of different assets and they, they're a pretty decent company. Um, you know, they're doing less in revenue for sure, um, but if we're like valuing um, Marriott at 
the same you know valuation of Airbnb. Let's go kind of 49 bill divided by their price worth sales right now is two point something. So that's 24 X, which obviously because of the COVID dip had a big difference. Um, you know, if that happens with Airbnb, if they're getting valued at 24 X of price towards sales and if they end up being a $6 billion company, you know, you're looking at, you know, $144 billion market cap, but I still think that's, that would be way too bullish in that case scenario actually. And that's at five years from now, right? So that's, you're looking at 116, a 24% increase in five years, which is very, very low um, for a stock like this. So that's a little concerning in that standpoint. I think people could even value this at a much lower rate. Let's look at something like Hilton. Uh, Hilton is a $34 billion market cap. A lot of this is kind of hard to really value as well with these last 2020 numbers. Um, yeah, they're doing like 20 something X price towards sales. It's a little hard to value it because you know, it's such a weird year, 2020 in the travel industry. But I think that's one thing, right? Just the, simply the numbers, if they don't grow, you're gonna see to start that drop massively. Um, the second thing is regulatory issues, like 100%. You know, you could see that some people have just issues with this and they don't want um, to have this happen. Like you kind of Google real quick, like Airbnb regulatory issues, right? There's so many studies, there's so many places like, like look at this. Since 2018, the company has launched legal actions against Boston, Palm Beach County, Miami, and New York twice. It's been sued by cities and for advertising illegal properties and all these different places where it's interesting, you know, like at the end of the day, if all these lobbyists like no, who are, you know, being lobbied by the hotel companies, like Vegas is a perfect example. Vegas, like, is probably never going to allow, and you can get Airbnbs in Vegas, but for like people in the city of Henderson or their surrounding areas, it's probably never gonna happen because that city is 100% based off of that. And you look at you know things like Miami Beach or even like New York, it's gonna be very hard for it to be like, you know, big scale, which the issue with that, Airbnb grows from its host and its guest. People stay like, oh, I like this, now let me put my house up there. That's kind of the concept. So when you go to New York or go to Miami Beach and there's not many choices there, you're not gonna have hosts that are gonna go up there. So. That's definitely a big strategy that they have. And I guess, you know, if they're building a big legal team, that's great because I think they should fight for it. Um, it's something really interesting. It's like, why, why can't you just have a friend at your house? So if they go through that, that's obviously room for growth, but I believe that isn't priced in. So I think that's a risk because obviously it's not priced in. They're at a crazy valuation. Um, you know, looking at that, if more and more of that happens, that's obviously not good and that's bad news for them. And if like there's cases that are lost, that's not good. Um, Cause I think it's priced in that they're gonna have that go through. Another issue that could be a downside for them as well is actually competition. So I started this video talking about, I believe, you know, Airbnb kind of has that moat where it's like, oh, go get an Airbnb. But there are companies like Marriott that are actually kind of starting their own little uh, Airbnb a little bit. So if you do like Marriott short-term rentals, uh, they have like their vacation rentals that they're doing, temporary housing, executive suites, um, you know, Marriott, vacation rentals so and it's this isn't like new like there's always been like you know the homes and villas so what what the, the only thing that's kind of like the competition here is marriott came out with their home and villas by marriott where if you have a home you can go list it up there but there's like a bunch of different you know things you have to jump through so you know i think that's at the end of the day that is you know kind of airbnb's competition you have companies like let's say marriott or hilton that comes out with their own things that people can go there it's they have a lot of money as well, they can easily go copy that and they have that brand name. So that's definitely a risk that they have, which I think in this case scenario, if Airbnb gets regulatory issues, they don't grow, so people are gonna value it at a much lower rate. I think investors could easily value it at a 15X of price towards sales. Um, I think they could almost pretty much keep their revenue so they're not doing more. If they have regulatory issues, like if they're at a 15X price towards sales and they're a $6 billion company, you know, you're looking at they're going to be a 90 billion dollar company which is and that's in you know some time from now uh let's do 90 divided by 116 you're looking at this 23 percent drop so that's a risk for sure but now the upside with it is really not that great either and you're looking at it but one thing that i will say that is interesting if you are wanting to own airbnb for the long term and you you see a bull side to this you can't really ignore the option side of it because you know, this is the weekly options. I'm filming this on a Sunday. Um, so this would 
you know, obviously it's, things are gonna change with it being um, the next few days from now. But uh, if you look at this, right now it's trading at 194. You could leave yourself rooms for capital gains of like a couple percentage points, which if you wanna check this out, go to the domain stocks.club or check out my link down in the bio um, where you can actually check out a course on how to learn all this information from and how to kind of profit from selling options. You know, you could sell that 197.5 strike and you could collect more than 2% on your money, um, 194. So look at that, right? You could enter a position in Airbnb, you would pay 194 times 100, just under $20,000 and you can make roughly 500 bucks a week from that. So that's something that's can't really ignore. Now, if you're a short seller, that's another thing to look at as well. You could literally go, you know, really high up the strike, um, 194, let's go 220, divide by 194, you know, you could be like, okay, Airbnb could have a 13% gain and you're still gonna get like half a percent on your money. So that's another thing that if you're short seller, that's interesting to look at. If you're looking to buy puts on Airbnb, it's gonna be definitely a challenging business to get into. Obviously, if it goes down the short term, you'll make money, but you know, it's really, really priced in on both. It looks like investors are more pricing in the puts than they are pricing in the calls if you actually look at this. Well, these are the calls, so let's look at the puts right now. Uh, actually, it's, it's a little even, so I'm actually wrong there. Um, so the puts aren't too expensive, but anywho, um, if you're gonna get in the stock and your plan is an options play, you know, it could be interesting. If you're doing it from, you don't believe the company is good um, and doing it as a short, you know, you could definitely do pretty decent here. Um, if you're long on it, I think it probably would make sense for the short term, like next few years or so, is definitely to hedge your position and sell calls onto it. If you wanna learn about that, check out stocks.club. Um, but it's interesting. Any value, so to recap this, from any single valuation, it's 100% overvalued. Uh, people are pricing in that they're gonna grow massively. And I think there could be some investors that maybe know what they don't know. Like I think if um, Airbnb got into the financing space, it would make total sense to value this as $100 billion. Like if they start opening up their own banks and start you know, um, making partnerships, like that makes so much sense. Cause now they can be kind of like, you know, like if they made a, a partnership with Rock and Mortgage, like, you know, it's insane because if they were able to convince some of those companies like Rocket Mortgage or any mortgage company like, hey, like this is really valuable, you can open up a massive investment space for real estate investors that's gonna be really disrupt the space. So I don't know if they're gonna be doing that. You know, the CEO, he's an amazing guy. I watched an interview from him last night. Um, you know, I don't know if they're thinking like that. I don't know if they are, but that could be something that's very interesting up their sleeve.